Welcome to the webcast on the wonders of birds hosted by the life science domain of the Royal Academy. I am delighted to be your host for today's session. My name is Gunsang Choden and I am a student of grade 11 studying at the Royal Academy. So today's webcast is focused on exploring the fascinating world of birds and we have organized the session into five segments. In the first segment, we have the privilege of listening to Mr. Sencho Wandi, a passionate bird enthusiast and a conservationist, who will be sharing his personal experiences and insights about birding. The second segment will delve into the historical significance of birds in Bhutanese art and culture. We will explore uh, how birds have been portrayed in traditional art forms and how they have influenced Bhutanese culture over the centuries. Uh, in the third segment, um, we will have Tile Wazir Doji, a student of the Royal Academy, who will be sharing how birds have inspired <laughs> the aviation industry. Uh, from the shape of the airplane wings to the development of uh, aircraft navigation systems, we will see how birds have been instrumental in shaping modern aviation technology. In the fourth segment, um, we will uh, focus on the bird species, the traits and conservation initiatives in Bhutan. We will discuss the unique bird species uh, found in Bhutan, the traits that they face and conservation efforts being undertaken to preserve them. Finally, in the fifth segment, we will look at what we can learn from birds and the exciting career opportunities available in the field of ornithology. I hope all of you will join us uh, through this exciting journey through the world of birds and discover the wonders that they hold. So as I've uh, mentioned earlier, in the first segment, uh, we have Mr. Tencho Wandi. Welcome, Mr. Tencho. Um, firstly, I would like to ask uh, you to introduce yourself and tell us what inspired you to do birding. Kuzuzongu to all the viewers. Uh, thank you, Kunzong, for inviting me to share my insights on this webcast. Uh, I am Tencho Wandi. By profession, I'm an accountant and Besides my profession, I, I do bird watching and I'm an avid uh, bird watcher, nature enthusiast and a conservationist. So to answer your question on how I got inspired into bird watching, uh, I've, I've seen my friends and also I've heard from many great nature lovers that uh, how a small incidents in the nature have changed their entire life. And same thing happened to me. And same thing has also happened to me. My inspiration for Bird watching came to uh, bird watching came when when I saw an alpine egg center at the Parotaksang, uh, and from that day on, I would say this is one of the uh, wonderful journey I have taken so far. And uh, I found out that bird watching is an excellent way to connect with the nature and also gain the insight with with the natural world. And I have learned a lot and. More I learned, the more my passion for bird grew, and I'm happy that I'm able to pursue this passion. Thank you. So you talked about birding as an excellent way to connect with nature and gain insight into the natural world. Do you think it is important to connect with nature? And if so, can you tell us why? Uh, yes, Kunzong, uh, absolutely. I feel it is necessary for us to connect with uh, nature uh, observing and uh, studying birds provide us with the opportunity to con opportunity to learn the behavior, the, their habitats, and also the ecological roles that birds play in the ecosystem. Uh, birding often requires the outdoor activities, uh, outdoor activities which has a numerous uh, benefit for for in, in terms of like physical and mental health. And uh, research have also shown that uh, when when you when one is in the nature, uh, there is many like many benefits like uh, cerebral function improvement. Um, it also boosts the, our mood and also reduce the symptom of, symptom of, of dep uh, depression and anxiety. And as a human, I feel that it is very necessary for us to uh, get a deeper understanding and uh, deeper understanding and appreciation to nature so that we can work towards conservation of this, uh, our planet's biodiversity. Um, I can conclude from your response that um, 
Reading is helpful not only at an individual level to um, maintain your physical and mental health, but also on a larger scale where you are able to contribute to environmental monitoring and conserve our mother nature. And I would uh, recommend my fellow students, uh, especially the 12th graders to spend more time in nature, try to connect with it and do braiding whenever possible because um, it will help you um, to develop cerebrally and it will help you in preparing for your board examinations. And most importantly, it will uh, help you to prepare for your life. And it will also help you to reduce um, symptoms of anxiety and depression, as Mr. Tencho already mentioned. And um, speaking of students, Mr. Tencho, we have a picture of you with the students of the Royal Academy. Can you explain more about this learning experience you had with the children? Uh, working with the student here at the Royal Academy was one of the wonderful experience for me because uh, I got I got an opportunity to share my my passion for birds with the with the young generation with the young mind and uh, also uh, I will encourage them also to encourage them with uh, to take up uh, you know to to take up a na nature as their passion and uh, during this session I I teach them the overview of uh, birds found in Bhutan and also the also few bird watching tips. And we also have a bird watching tour in campus. We went to Chelela uh, and also to Punaka, where we have spotted different uh, bird species. And I feel like it is very necessary for us to conduct such learning experiences because it will give an opportunity for young mind to understand nature and uh, give give an insight on on the protection of our environment. Thank you. I wish I was also there to join the exciting and educational um, experience with you all at Chalila and Punaka. Um, anyway, you uh, mentioned spotting uh, different species of birds. I believe that you had uh, you have contributed in recording two new species uh, in Bhutan, two new bird species in Bhutan. Can you tell us more about that? Uh, but as as we all know that Bhutan is rich in biodiversity, and we have more than seven hundred birds. 700 birds and during my bird birding expedition uh, I have rec I have seen more than 500 birds and among them I have a privilege of uh, sighting and recording a two new species which was never recorded in Bhutan. Uh, so these are the two birds that you had uh, documented the graceful prenia and greater white fronted goose. Uh, where did you spot them? How did you feel when you knew that these two birds were previously not in recording Bhutan? And what were some of the challenges that you faced while trying to keep a record of these species? The first bird, uh, graceful prenia, was recorded at uh, Maukala in Gelefu in the year 2017 during the Global Big Day event. And the second one, the greater white fronted goose, was uh, recorded in in the year 2021 in February at Paroshaba. And while documenting this, uh, documenting to these two new species is one of the like wonderful experience for me. And that I'm excited that, and I'm happy that I'm able to contribute to the uh, by Bhutan's, uh, especially in the avi fauna. And uh, it is also a hum humbling experience for me because there are there there are many more still to explore, uh, to inspire and to also uh, to also uh, contribute to the nations. Uh, like I said in the every formula. And honestly, I think uh, Bhutan needs uh, more uh, contributive citizens like you to ever keep prospering. And it would have been a moment of pride for you, your family, and of course, it is something that we are also proud of and you will be remembered and recognized uh, always for your amazing work. Thank you once again for sharing your knowledge and experience with us uh, and for being an inspiration to the younger generations. Uh, your work is truly admirable and I hope it continues to um, make a positive impact on Bhutan's environment and wildlife. Moving forward, we shall now play a recorded video. In the video, we have Limbo Sonam Topke, 
share about the significance of birds in Bhutanese art and culture. Lembo Sonam Tokge's distinguished background as the former Chief Justice of Bhutan and the recipient of Druk Wangyal Medal highlights his exceptional uh, dedication and loyalty to the nation. Lembo Sonam Tokge's insights are highly valuable. Through his discourse, we shall gain a deeper understanding of the importance of the rich cultural heritage of Bhutan. The birds and animals play a very important role in the Buddhist arts. As Thomas Jefferson once said, symbols, we live by symbols and symbols inspire us. And Buddhism, to a great extent, has used some of these animals to ma manifest and to teach ethics and values. Similarly, here in Bhutan too, the birds play, play a very important role in the symbols of the Buddhist teachings. Teachings on Buddhists are generally in, uh, in the following. A, the Buddhism are taught in words and prayers. The other one is the visual. And for those, the manifestations are in animals, colors, and others. The simpler version or the more condensed version of both Buddhism and Hinduism are expressed in mudras. The final one is a meditation, the inner, um, uh, the, to achieve in nirvana. So Buddhism has used the five organs, first for sight, then for sound, the, the smell, mouth and heart. And the birds play those important roles. One of the most important birds here in Bhutan is obviously raven. Raven is not commonly found in the country. It is only at the higher places. Raven played a very important role, particularly in Bhutan, because it is a manifest, not manifestation, it is a one of the manifestations of Mahakala, which is our guardian deity. Mahakala originally came from Nalanda University, and when Mahatma came to Tibet, he carried that, and then when Shabdung Awanamgi came to Bhutan, Mahakala and Mahakali accompanied Shabdung Awanamgi as a guardian deities of Bhutan. They are uh, pervasive in Bhutan in their, in their influence. They, are, they have uh, deep spiritual values in the pujas that we perform, uh, the altars that we pray, and the statues that we uh, perform. And Punaka, the winter in Punaka, Summer in Thimphu Domche are the classic choreographed manifestation of the birds and uh, particularly Raven and Mahakala Mahakali have played that. Shabdu Namge was supposedly guided by the Raven directions to Bhutan. So he came to Bhutan and thereafter it became a symbol of our Mahakala. Uh, Mahakala. And uh, the most important role it played in a historical perspective is in 18, 19, 1864 and 65, when our uh, the first uh, the, uh, the father of the first king, when Gongsa Jimmy Namge went to bat battle uh, to Deothang, before that. Lam Jiangshu Tsindu, who was his root guru, made a crown with a raven crown. 
And uh, this was very significant. A, that the raven is depicted in the Pemalingpa's guardian deity, as well as in the Kajipa deity, uh, the, the Kajipa sex. And Konsa Jiminamge, he wore that crown even during a battle. And it is often said, and not said, I think we believe that the victory was because he was guided. His actions, his victory was blessed and guided by Mahakala through the raven crown placed on his head. Thereafter, all the successive kings won the raven crown on their coronations. So it has spiritual values, it has social and cultural values, and it has a political values and significance. Birds, raven have played a very important role, both raven and crow. Generally, all the feathers are used, as I said, for the pujas. But the specific feathers of uh, used are the peacocks. The peacock's feathers are, play a very important role. Peacock symbolizes the, 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 the bodhisattvas. The reason being it said that peacock, their daily diet is poison. Scientifically may be different, but they, their diet is a poison. With the poison, the peacock has a the technique of the digestion, or called a positive, positive action, is they digest it and that poison and is turned into radiance and beauty. Hence their feathers are one of the most colorful feathers in, in, the, in the bird world. So the feathers are used. So feathers symbolizes the first the bodhisattva who can transform the negative aspect into a positive aspect. Hence to emulate for a Bhutanese or a, for other people to not only to uh, emphasize on negativity, but that negativity should be positive and one that the major uh, the 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 peacocks uh, depict that. Then hence they also wear the peacock's throne on the dancing of particularly with a black hat, not others' dances. Black hat dancers use feathers. Again, it is the higher tantric knowledge of transformation from a negativity to the positivity. The, the other common thing is whenever we do uh, the pujas, particularly a sprinkling of water is generally done through the, the maja feathers or the peacock feather. Again, let this water transform or transform all the negative and malevolent in a positive in, and into a world of, you know, this spirituality. And those words are there and, uh, and we utter them. I don't know whether you, we understand, but all these, when the lamas pray, all these words are there when they do it with actions. That is the religious side. And the other side, the feathers from the cultural or a, our social point of view, the first thing we used them was on the arrows that we played. And they played such an important role and it is often said, the best arrows are made of the best feathers. So therefore the feathers are very important in arrows. And not only the feathers play an important role in arrows, but we, my feathers play an important role in arrows, but we also use them for the different purposes. Uh, and some of them are graded and we have used feathers like uh, when we were young, we used to use them on our hat. Now, I didn't see anybody using them. We will use that. 
And now I have to relate to what I said earlier. And it's not dichotomy, but it is a harmony of that. And the brother birds generally symbolizes harmony. And harmony is depicted with the, the, the feather of uh, when Guru Padma Sambhava on his, he has five hats, Guru Rinpoche wears five hats, all called caps. And those caps, one of them was offered by the king uh, of, uh, um, of, uh, of that place, I forget the name. And uh, when he used it, and on that cap, the gudo is there. The feather of the vulture is there. And that is, uh, again, of, uh, the omnipresence and also empowerment. So, from religious to common puja, Guru Padma Sambhava using it on his cap, and also we are using an arrow. The, the feathers of birds have played an important role. Firstly, one of the teachings of Lord Buddha, first and foremost, is color actually. And the colors are reflected by different birds and animals. They are at the hue, it's a, it's, a, it's a great colors we have. And it has inspired the human imagination and the artists to draw them. So therefore, our Bhutanese houses are painted with the different colors, which actually to a certain extent originated from the birds and animals. Okay? The second part of the, their contribution to our society is obviously, as I said, culture. There are so many songs. Now, of course, nowadays it's all about love affairs. But in those days, it was in the praise of the bird. If you look at the, look at the Tibetan song, uh, so some of which we sing, the crane carried monk, uh, Lo, uh, Dalai Lama to, to the different monasteries. If you look at the Ramayan, you will see a vulture carrying Rama to Sri Lanka. These are the songs that inspired us. These are the songs that made our values. These are the inspirations for artists. Then the, the other part, that the preservation of this, are basically by, by, uh, by the belief that not to disturb the, the, not to destroy the nature and birds and animals, we can preserve them. We have done it so far. Till now, it was through belief we did it. Originally, it was a religion that protected the birds and animals and everything. It was later the belief, because we were so frightened of going to hell, so we protected them. Third, now the constitution said it, and fourth, to the with the environment consciousness that this world, this earth, is not only for us, but it is for others. Hence, the Buddhist concept of sentient beings. It is not a man's world or a human world. It is a sentient being. As a sentient being, we have a right to a livelihood, like the constitution says in every country, like the right to livelihood and right to life. Lord Buddha extends that to a right to sentient beings. As long as we are conscious of our past heritage, we are safe from the marauding uh, influences of the present generation or any other generation. But more so, I a person like you. Now, this is one aspect of recognizing or giving the recognition. First and foremost is a recognition of the importance or the role of the birds. I think this is the first realization. Second is an awareness that it is important for all of us. It is not only for the general, but it has a personal relevance. That has that. The third part is we want our children to enjoy walking in the forest, listening to the birds, gurgling brooks or rivers, and 
We want the birds flying everywhere. And the, uh, we would like our birds to come and not buy birds in cage, but we live in this environment like Bhutan. So our consciousness and our desire for the values of the different birds and others will obviously help us to retain the past heritage, enrich them for the future generation and enjoy them at this juncture. Hence, people, this is one very good thing in this world, particularly for the last few, last few years. There are people who are interested in birds and animals. Bhutan is one of the favorite place, though it's a small country, but we have almost over 300 or odd bird species, which are rare in the world. And when others come and see us, see those birds, obviously it has a significance and it has responsibility upon every, every citizen of this country to preserve and to protect them. Well, I would like to express my deepest gratitude to Limbo Sonam Topke for sharing his thoughts on the historical and cultural significance of birds in Bhutanese art and culture. It is truly fascinating to learn about the integral role of birds uh, uh, which have been significant in Bhutanese culture over the years. And we appreciate the valuable insights that Limbo has provided us with. And I would say this conservation, uh, conversation we had with uh, Limbo was an extraordinary one. And uh, once again, I would like to thank Lumbo for sharing his knowledge with us and enriching our understanding of Putnis art and culture. So our next speaker is Tile Wazir Doji, a student of the Royal Academy, who is currently studying uh, in the 10th grade. He will be sharing how uh, birds have inspired the aviation industry. His passion for science and technology has helped him explore the fascinating connections between avian flight and human innovation. On this note, I would like to welcome uh, Tile Wazidoji. So Tile, uh, I would like to ask uh, you, what are some of the features unique to birds that enable them to fly and how do these features uh, differ from those found in other flying creatures? Uh, so before I answer this question, I feel that it's important to note that there are countless other um, innovations that have been inspired by birds over the years. And all of these innovations have contributed to us humans and our development. So I feel that it is important to credit them for that stuff. However, uh, to stick to the topic of today's webinar, I will be talking about birds and how they have influenced the aviation industry. So when you think about flying creatures and what helps them fly, I think it's obvious that the first thing that comes up to everyone's mind are wings. So there are insects that have wings and there are bats that have wings. Almost every creature that can fly has wings in one way or another. But one thing that makes birds a bit unique and special is the fact that their wings have feathers and the fact that these feathers are able to change their shape and their position uh, while they're flying. So and in the air as they're flying, they're able to change the shape of the feathers. So this is able to help them change the direction in which they're flying and also the orientation of where they're flying. And another key feature is that we have, similar to us humans, a heart that has four chambers. So how this helps them fly with efficiency is that it allows them to send blood with oxygen to the parts that are using uh, muscles that when flying constantly. So there's no muscles that are ever fatigued or tired when, so these are features that are unique to birds only, and we don't usually apply to other flying animals in that. Uh, you mentioned some of the features unique to birds that enable them to fly are their efficient respiratory system and the structure of their wings. And you have also brought light to the differences between birds and other flying creatures. So how have these unique features inspired aircraft design over the years? So aircraft designers and engineers have looked at birds as a source of inspiration for countless years. Uh, 
And a recent study that I read about was concerning the wings of the birds. So like I mentioned earlier, the wings are able to change orientation and the feathers are able to change shape while they're flying. So engineers have taken this attribute or mechanism and they were able to implement it in our modern day aircrafts by adding flaps. So if you look at the wings and the tails of aircraft today, they have tiny flaps that move open and close. And this is something that allows aircraft to rotate, turn, and then move while they're flying. And another would be, as I mentioned again, their heart and their respiratory system. So this was also implemented into aircraft today, especially commercial airlines that uh, helps them to distribute oxygen throughout the cabin efficiently. So the unique features of birds such as their structure and behavior of wings have really inspired the aircraft design and it has re really been helpful in this particular field. So what challenges have engineers faced in creating aircrafts that mimic bird flight patterns and what solutions have they developed to overcome these challenges? So engineers have ventured to copy or try to mimic bird's flight for hundreds of years, but with these ventures, there are also multiple failures. So an example of this that I read about was a machine called the ornithopter, which was a machine that tried to copy the flapping motion that a bird made when it, fly, when it flew. However, this was unsuccessful because they were unable to create enough upthrust and they weren't able to lift the aircraft. And in order to overcome these challenges, they did further research and the ornithopter sort of paved the way for modern day aircraft since it gave the engineers an idea of what ideas would work and what ideas didn't work in terms of flight. Thank you. Uh, even though uh, concepts like um, aircraft design and avian flight are quite broad, it is inspiring how engineers are trying to come up with innovative solutions to um, uh, overcome these challenges. So how have advancements in technology help improve um, aircraft design and performance and in what ways can we uh, learn from birds and their flight capabilities to uh, create more efficient and uh, eco-friendly aircraft in the future? Um, so there has been a lot of research and a lot of effort that has gone into creating aircraft that can fly and of course that are inspired by birds. So when researching further into bird uh, flight, we were able to find out a key principle that helped birds fly with efficiency. And this is also known as the principle of aerodynamics. So through looking at the features that helped a bird um, fly with more efficiency, we found out features such as a sharp beak and a streamlined body, and they were able to implement these into modern day aircraft. And that is a reason that aircraft are much more efficient. So how did implementing these and making aircraft more um, aerodynamic create sustainability? So basically when an aircraft or any body is more aerodynamic, it requires less fuel to power since it is easier and requires less air resistance. So through creating more aerodynamic bodies and objects for aircraft, they were able to reduce the emissions that the aircraft produced and therefore create more sustainable aircraft. Uh, I can see that uh, advancements in technology and principle of dynamics has really played a significant role in um, helping us create a more efficient and eco-friendly aircraft. So are there any research projects um, exploring the um, relationship between birds and aviation? And if so, uh, what do they entail? So of course, this is quite a broad area. So there are quite a few research projects that are ongoing. And a very interesting one was one that uh, I recently came upon thanks to a teacher. So it was concerning uh, something called a nano hummingbird. So in nature, hummingbirds are a bird that is known to fly or sort of hover in place and is able to stay there which is an ability that most or almost all other birds don't have. And upon further research, they were able to find that the bodily functions of a hummingbird were very efficient, the breathing and the blood distribution. So they did further research and they were able to sort of apply the hummingbird's body onto a drone and create a drone that was very precise and 
very agile. So it is said that they are going to they're going to use this drone in future military projects. Um, it is inspiring to learn that there are current research projects um, exploring on this particular area, and how it is leading to uh, new innovations. So thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and insights on the technology inspired by birds. Your passion for birds and um, aircraft is truly inspiring. And it's fascinating how engineers are able to adapt to the flight mechanics of birds to create more efficient and eco-friendly aircraft. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time to join us today. Uh, thank you for a wonderful uh, session. Um, now we'll move on to the fourth segment. Bhutan is home to a rich diversity of bird species, some of which are unique to the region. However, these bird species uh, face numerous threats to their survival, including habitat loss, poaching, and the effects of climate change. But there is hope. Bhutan has implemented various uh, conservation efforts to protect the bird population and their habitats, uh, including um, establishing national parks, community-based conservation programs and promoting sustainable uh, tourism. Uh, tourism. Um, today, we will uh, learn more about the importance of biodiversity and the important role that birds play in maintaining this diversity, as well as the challenges and successes of bird conservation efforts in this country. So let's dive into this important discussion and uh, let's explore the fascinating world of Bhutan's uh, bird species. We shall now play an interview uh, conducted by my friend Jimmy Dichen with Mr. Ching Tokye, who works with the Royal Society for Protection of Nature. sir. I am Jimmy Dichen, an 11th creator at the Royal Academy. On behalf of everyone, I'd like to express our gratitude and appreciation for fitting us in your very frenetic schedule and Without further ado, I'd like to ask the first question. What is biodiversity and why is it important for maintaining ecological balance? Like imagine uh, going to a forest and when you get into the forest, we can hear lots of, let's say, the sounds of wild animals, let's say, like the birds, the chirping, the sound of birds. We can even see the footprints of uh, wild animals. They're very, if you look around the forest again, we'll not just see animals, you will also see some plants, varieties of plants, different kinds of trees. So biodiversity, or in other way, we can say that the biological diversity, so it refers to the diversity or variety of plants and animals that you see in a place. So that's actually a biodiversity. So that another question that uh, you have asked me is about why it's important to maintain like ecological balance. It's very important. Now, when we have a biodiversity, the every living organism on the earth, we have our own role. Considering the small ants we have, each organism have a role, uh, let's say, uh, that contributes or that supports the functioning of earth. So it's very important. So whenever we have in a place, when we have a diverse kind of plants and animals, so they have their own role. And when they have their own role, they actually helps to maintain the ecological balance. If there is a disturbance or if, let's say, the eco ecosystem or the, the, the function of earth is imbalance, if there's no equilibrium, then definitely it will impact the, any organism that's there in that place. So somehow, like extinction, we hear now and then hear the extinction of animals. So this is all because of ecological imbalance and ecological ba imbalance can be contributed by different factors. So moving on to my next question, how important is biodiversity in Bhutan and what role do birds play in maintaining this biodiversity? Okay, thank you very much. Yes, the birds, the question, the, the components of like the, when you ask the question about birds, I think that always inspired me a lot. That always uh, get me interested in talking about birds. So first, like uh, in terms of question, like why biodiversity is important for our country, Bhutan. Bhutan, you know that our country is landlocked and we are located in a young Himalayan uh, range of, uh, let's say, uh, uh, located in a young Himalayan uh, mountain range country. So, uh, and the people, if you consider the, the livelihood of people, we are mostly dependent on agriculture. 
activities. So if you do not maintain biodiversity, now if you think for like the main social economy of country, it's, uh, let's say we are all dependent on rivers because of river, the hydropower is generated and because of that, the income through hydropower, we are able to run the social economy of our country. That's one of the main thing. So now that river, if we do not maintain the biodiversity, if we do not maintain like the trees, the variety of trees on the mountains or in the watershed area, so do you think that there will be a water or a river? So our river will dry up, right? So because of rich biodiversity, we have a river, we have a clean air, clean water. So because of that, like, we are able to run our, the social economy of our country. So if you do not maintain the biodiversity, definitely there will be an impact to our country's uh, income or economy. So I can talk in terms like the importance of biodiversity for Bhutan can be first thing is like the benefit, the social economic benefit. Next, you know that the Buddhist people, we worshipped, we are too uh, engrossed for, let's say, in, in the cultural activities. Many people worship, for example, like we consider big trees, uh, like nearby our trees, like a sacred, right? The big, like the rocks again, the big the stone all, we also respect them or we also consider them as a, a sacred place. So for that, it's very important, like biodiversity. So because of biodiversity, we have a culture again. So second benefit is the cultural benefit. The third can be, we can also talk in terms like the so, uh, ecological, the Bhutan, as I shared earlier, we are located in a young Himalayan mountain range. We are susceptible to, uh, we are very sensitive to climate change. Any, let's say, the weather condition can impact our, our country, like landslide, flood, soil erosion. So if you do not maintain biodiversity properly, there will be a huge impact to the livelihood of people. So that's, I think, the importance of biodiversity for Bhutan can be in the three broad categories, like socioeconomic. Even if you go uh, to the town or a vegetable market, you can see lots of wild, wild vegetables, fruits that have been gathered by the people and they are doing a business for that. So that's, again, so socioeconomic. Second is cultural benefit. And third can be ecological benefit that the biodiversity is having uh, to our country. In terms of birds, like the role of birds in contributing to the maintaining of, let's say, the biodiversity. Now birds, they're very significant. So bird is one very important component of biodiversity. And, and it's an amazing creature. So as I shared earlier, when, uh, whenever I, uh, let's say, when a question, someone, uh, someone asks me a question about, to talk about birds, I always get uh, very interested to talk about birds. So bird is really amazing. And we can't actually to quantify the, let's say, the amount of the contribution that birds make to the, uh, let's say, helping in maintaining the, the, helps in maintaining the biodiversity. So, like, if you consider one of the bird species like hornbill, so they are often regarded as uh, farmers of forest. So, like, what they do, let's say, in the forest, the hornbills, they help in carrying the seeds, the seed dispersal, and like even in terms of agriculture, we have different kinds of bird species like raptors. We have some raptor species and some like very small uh, the pastoral bird species. Like they even help in controlling the pest in terms of agriculture. So different uh, species of birds, they have a different roles in maintaining the biodiversity, even in terms of like not just benefit to our, let's say the livelihood of people, even in terms of like uh, maintaining or controlling the let's say the population of other organisms because like food chain in a food chain so some like the raptor species like eagle so they control the, the population of the smaller animals and uh, the other benefits of uh, birds can be like some birds they help in again like the vultures they help in like uh, decompositions because they feed on some dead animals so they also help in the uh, decomposition so there are lots, uh, the, uh, let's say, the importance of birds that actually helps in uh, maintaining the biodiversity. Thank you, sir. Um, from this, I'm able to understand the contribution of biodiversity to economic growth, how it influences cultural beliefs and ecological benefits, and the 
birds being a significant factor in the maintenance of biodiversity. So my next question is, are there any bird species in Bhutan that are unique to the country or region and how are they being protected? In terms of bird diversity, the first of all, the Bhutan, we are very famous of having a it's a rich diversity of birds. So we have more than 700 bird species so far we have recorded in our country. And like in terms of like either we can say endemic or some unique birds that we have in our country. So as a country, we do not have some like having a let's say endemic species of birds, but as a region, because Bhutan we fall falls under a Eastern Himalayan biodiversity hotspot region. So we have different kinds of bird species that are unique to this region. So like the different kinds of pheasant species like Blitz uh, Tragopan, we have like Satya Tragopan, then we have also Timnik uh, Tragopan, then World Tragopan again. And even the one very unique uh, the species that we can consider to the Eastern Himalayan uh, Bidus or Hotspot can be White-bellied Harrow, one which is critically endangered. So that species is only found in three region, uh, three countries. So that's one uh, country, Bhutan, another is in Northeast India and Myanmar. So that's very unique to, to this region. And it, again, it is categorized as critically endangered. So these are some of the unique species that we have in our control, in our region. Now, <coughs> in terms of threats to bird species in our country, since many of the bird species that we, found, uh, that we see in our country, they are mostly of like terrestrial birds. So they are mostly dependent on like forest. And we do have like water birds, so that are dependent on river. So any developmental activities that actually take place in the forest, or let's say uh, any uh, developmental activity that take place related to the forest, the destruction of forest, or any developmental activities, the civil infra infrastructure that develops along the rivers. So these are some of the main threats actually that uh, impacts of uh, bird conservation or bird species. So in terms of like the impact of climate change on bird conservation or bird species, so in Bhutan, the, to be frank, we haven't done much of research uh, related to the uh, impacts of climate change on bird species, but we have, uh, let's say, we have recorded some kind of unusual patterns of like in terms of bird migration, because birds usually migrate depending on the seasons. So that, that can be related to climate change, we can say that. So like normally because uh, some bird species, so whenever they migrate, they have a specific place and specific season to migrate. So, but nowadays, or in recent year, we have seen some unusual migration. So even in some places that we have never recorded earlier of that bird species, we used to see them. So for example, you might have heard like the black neck crane getting into like in the southern region, like in Panbang, Samdu Zonkar. These are some unusual things. So that can be also related to climate change. So even some species uh, used to get dispersed. We also call it as a dispersal. So during the uh, bird migration, sometimes in certain years, we also see like some bird species getting dispersed throughout our country. So that can be also associated with the uh, impact of climate change. So the climate change normally, it will impact uh, in terms of like bird migration. That another uh, one we can anticipate is like when there is a climate change. Now, let's say birds, they depend, uh, let's say they are dependent on like mostly on it's the fruits, fruits, flowers, the nectars. So if, uh, because of climate change, the phenophase, or we, call, we can call this a phenology, of the plants will again change. The timing for their fruiting seasons or flowering seasons will again change. And whenever that change happen, then this will directly impact the birds. So in, like some birds, when they get to the place, if because of climate change, that plant is not blooming, so they will be not getting food. So that will again threaten the, uh, let's say it will threaten the birds. So these are some of the anticipated uh, like uh, in, uh, impacts of climate change, and even the like because of climate change, the habitat uh, the habitat will also alter. So this can be uh, let's say considered as some of the impacts of climate change. Then like what we do in terms of like mitigating this climate change, so. Yes, so we constantly monitor the habitat 
and we keep records of whatever changes like in terms of even uh, starting from the temperature of the, the, the record that we maintain so the, uh, of that particular habitat. So we constantly keep track of that habitat, how it is changing. So uh, even we also keep uh, track of the, the migration pattern of birds, so whether there is impact or not. So based on that, we are now planning about some of the intervention measures to, or to uh, mitigate the impacts. So normally, like in terms of if I talk about like white blue heron, so in terms of like how the climate change might impact the white blue heron. So for that, like mitigation measure uh, in, involves like restoration of uh, the habitat where for white blue heron, as I shared, they normally uh, survive along the rivers. So uh, most uh, when they, during the breeding season, so they make the nest on the trees. So if there is, let's say because of forest fire or because of climate change, if there is a degradation of that forest, so we restore them. And, and we also, uh, also uh, give more importance in conserving the whole, the riverine landscape. So these are some of the mitigation uh, works that we actually carry out. The impacts of climate change would, is now uh, being clearly shown by the unusual migration of birds and the phenophase and mm. the ways that are being, the way initiatives that are being taken to mitigate these effects would be habitat monitor, monitoring the habitat and keeping track of their migration. Thank you so much for agree, agreeing to this interview, even though your, uh, your schedule is very tight. So with this, I'd like to end today's um, interview. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I would like to thank Mr. Sung Topke for sharing his expertise on the threatened species of birds in Bhutan and the efforts being made to uh, preserve them. It is uh, inspiring to hear about Bhutan's commitment towards conservation and its recognition of the importance of biodiversity. And Mr. Ching Dobke's insights into the important role that birds play in maintaining our biodiversity and the effects of climate change on bird populations were truly fascinating. And once again, I would like to thank Mr. Ching Dobke for taking uh, time and sharing his knowledge with us. Um, it is heartening to see uh, passionate individuals working towards uh, protecting this planet and its uh, precious wildlife. Now, uh, let us get back to our two panelists who are uh, here with me today. I have a couple of questions. The first question is to Mr. Tencho. Um, what are some potential career opportunities in the field of breeding and conservation and what uh, skills are required to do breeding? And what are some of the watermarks uh, that we can develop through breeding? Um, thank you. Uh, when it comes to career opportunity, I would say like, first thing is you can work in the field of ornithology. Uh, you can become an ornithologist. And other than that, you can also try for research officer and or biodiversity officer in the field of, in the field of, uh, like many organizations like uh, RSPN and uh, WWF or in the government organization in the forest department. And or you can also work as a tour operator and specializing in the field of uh, bird watching. And there, there are many, my, many of my friends are doing that. And you can work as a tourist uh, guide, mostly in the uh, bird watching guide. So, these are the, some of the career opportunity that we see. And when it comes to like uh, bird watching skills, uh, first thing is like, we need to have a passion for it. So without passion, I would say it is not possible. And to keep this passion alive, we need to be consistent. So consistent is must. And other than that, uh, the perseverance and practice will come on. So if you have a passion and be consistent on following your passion, then I would say this is the first uh, skill that you need. And on field, uh, I would say like you need a pair of binoculars and field guidebook and a, a notebook. So binocular is for to see the bird and the field guidebook is to for the reference and for the notepad uh, or a notebook is to write down some field observation and we call it as a GIS. Uh, GIS is uh, general information on shape and size. So you can write down the general information on 
some shape and size of a birds that you observe. So these are the, some of the basic uh, skills that you need. And when when it comes to like water watermarks, uh, that some of the few points I can em emulate from the birds is like adaptation, adaptability. So birds are the masters of uh, adaptation. So uh, they have evolved evolved uh, to adapt in the various uh, wide range of environment from the freezing Arctic to the to the like hot deserts. So by learning at the behavior of a birds, so you can learn to adapt at the new situations, new challenges and and new environment that we we go upon. And other thing we'll I will say is the uh, patience. So patience is must, uh, and through patience uh, we control our emotion. And like as I said earlier, that it reduce it may it also helps you to reduce the uh, system of the like in the uh, anxiety and depression. So patience helps in those things. And other thing I would say is the physical activity. So while going on bird watching, you have to move around. So you it keeps you active. So it keeps you active and then there are many advantages on the uh, both mental and physical health too and resilience i would say like one is resilience because birds are more of a more more of a birds they face a problem like climate change uh, habitat loss and the predations so but over the years the birds have uh, thrived to survive these situations and we can learn from them that you know, uh, any new challenges that we face, we can overcome it and we, we can overcome from any drawbacks or any setbacks that we face in our life. So these are the, some of the watchmarks that I can share here. Thank you. Thank you, you Mr. Senjo. Um, we can take birding as a career opportunity, but I think uh, birding is something that makes us into a better and stronger um, human being. So the next question is to Tile Wazirdoji. Um, what are some of the values and uh, lessons that we can learn from birds? And how can we apply these lessons and values in our real lives to uh, live in greater harmony with our environment and with each other? So something in nature, if you look at birds, is that they are very good at cooperating with each other. Um, whether they're building a nest or if they're searching for prey or scavenging, you'll see that they're able to coexist with each other and cooperate. So coexisting and cooperation, these two, these are two watermarks that I feel we can derive from birds and apply them on our day-to-day -day lives in order to live with the people around us and with the environment. So another thing is that birds are quite resourceful. If you look at how they build their nests and the way they live their lives, they know how to use the environment, but at the same time, preserve it and not damage it in any way. So I feel that that is also quite important since global warming and pollution is a big problem in our world. And with development, the environment is at a greater risk. So I feel that this is another important watermark that we can take in order to live with our environment. Well, thank you, Tile. So I can see that some of the values and lessons that we can learn from birds are their sense of cooperation and their resourcefulness. Thank you, Mr. Sencho and Tile, for sharing your insights on the career opportunities and the values and lessons uh, that we can learn from birds. With this, we have come to an end of this webcast. Uh, we had a fascinating discussion today about the world of birds and their significance to us as human beings. Um, from the history of flight designs inspired by birds to the cultural and uh, historical significance of birds, to the valuable lessons and values that they teach us, um, it is clear that birds are truly remarkable creatures. So as we come to the end of our webcast, I think it is important to reflect on some key takeaways from our discussion. Firstly, we have explored the incredible influence that birds have had on our world, uh, inspiring innovations and designs, which have helped us uh, achieve feats of flight uh, that were once thought impossible. We have also um, explored the deep cultural and uh, historical significance of birds uh, in Bhutanese art and culture, uh, which have been celebrated by uh, cultures uh, all across the country. 
uh, whether it's through art, mythology, or religious symbolisms, um, birds have played a powerful role in shaping human experience. But perhaps most importantly, uh, we have discussed the values and the lessons that birds teach us, um, starting from their resilience and adaptability to their sense of uh, cooperation and community. There's so much that birds teach us how to live in greater harmony with our environment and within ourselves. So as we close this webcast, um, I want to leave you with a final thought. Let's remember the beauty and the wonder of the natural world in which the uh, birds play an important uh, role. Uh, let's um, take the lessons and values that birds teach us and learn to apply them in our real lives and communities. Above all, let's continue to appreciate and protect the incredible diversity of life on this planet, including